All right, everybody. Looks like we got started here live. Welcome. It's me, Josh, with the Daily Mountain Bike Rider. If you are watching this after the fact, then welcome to you guys. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about this bike right here, which is actually my new bike. Uh, my Evil Reckoning is officially gone. It is sold, which is a sad, sad day, uh, but also a, an exciting day for what's on the horizon. So in this live stream, I'm going to talk about uh, my new bike a little bit, which is a Trek. You can call me Joey Trek now. Uh, I'm going to set it up a little bit. There's a couple things I need to do. And along with that, I'm going to be uh, working on the hardtail and setting up a demo hardtail that I have. So anyway, I'm going to invite everybody and welcome them as they jump on the screen. But just want to give you guys a download of what's going to happen for about the next hour. So thanks so much for watching these after the fact. Um, I'm doing this on a Wednesday night just for fun. So you never know when I'm going to go live. Sometimes I'll schedule them. Most times it's just craziness. Anyway, let's get to the live chat and uh, see who's jumping in here and see how everybody is. Drew Mayonnaise, first one to comment. Good to see you, Drew. Uh, we got Christopher, and he says, where are you at, Notification Squad? What's up, dudes? Oh, and look who already dropped in. It is the one, the only, Eric No Front Breaks. Eric, how are you? Hey, pretty good. Good. Good to see you, man. I just saw you. Oh, it's it's like Inception. So Eric just had a, an Eric, correct me if I'm wrong, Patreon only, like chat, is that right? Yeah, yeah. We do, uh, like my top tier on Patreon, we do a bi-weekly to monthly depends on when i have the time we'll just do a google hangout where everyone will get a link while i'll hop in so yeah awesome eric's uh, another youtuber he's based in the tech he's based in texas in the austin area is that correct yep i was gonna say houston but that would be totally wrong and uh eric's awesome because eric actually has a prosthetic uh i'm trying to think about your videos right arm because his back breaks on his left hand and uh eric's an awesome dude and inspires me as a writer and makes all y'all's excuses go away. And then who else do we have jumping in? Another guy who used to live in Austin but ran away because it was too cool for him. That is Joseph with Trail Features. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Joseph, tell us a little bit about you and your channel and what you're doing in life right now, man, while I open this nice, cool lemon LaCroix. <laughs> okay. Well, right now I'm having a little bit of computer problems. Okay, got it. So, yeah, I run the YouTube channel Trail Features. I like to goof around with high end cameras. Not making content that I enjoy, and apparently others do too. So, I've been having a lot of fun with that. But as Josh said, I moved to Colorado. So, excited to make some new content out here. Cool. Awesome. Joseph, you were a little bit glitchy for me. I don't know if that was just me or everybody else too. Could be my internet. Um, anyway, last but not least, well, I'll get to JF in a second. Sorry, James. But Eric, you didn't tell us much about your channel. I kind of said it for you. So tell us a little bit about your channel. Uh, yeah, I just go out and I ride um, enduro downhill uh, with a prosthetic arm. So it's really about pushing yourself and trying to figure out uh, what you're capable of, trying to stretch your skills and, and ride beyond your limits. Awesome. Nailed it. And just so you know, somebody said Perrier is better than LaCroix. That is an absolute lie. Last but not least, we got JF Rides jumped on here. Uh, James is in the Colorado area. James, tell us about yourself and your channel, man, for anybody who hasn't seen it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Appreciate it. So yeah, JF Rides. Um, you know, I call JF Rides because I, I ride a lot. I just love riding mountain bikes and I love uh, kind of sharing the experience. So that's kind of what we do is I go out and record all the videos and share them with you guys on YouTube. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Well, guys, thanks for joining in. Um, I'm just doing maintenance tonight. I was just about to go live, and then I saw that uh, Eric over at No Front Brinks. Brinks. What's what's a brink? Anyway, No Front Brinks was uh, hanging out with his Patreons, and so now we're all going to hang out. I've got some bike maintenance, dude, because as you can see, I have a new bike. And Kent said, is that a Trek? Um, actually, no. This is an evil that I bought Trek stickers for, so people would think that was cool. Yeah. You, you, you had Stickered hook you up with some Trek stickers for your evil. Yeah, I called Richard over at Stickered. I said, let's just confuse people galore. And that's what we came up with. So, um, no, so you guys know I have officially sold the evil reckoning. It is gone, which is a sad day. I was just telling these other guys as I was chatting with them, um, I put it up for sale on our local, we have like a Pacific Northwest Classifieds thing on Facebook and on Pink Bike. Um, and some guy reached out and was interested in a trade, which I thought, man, only if it's like a good enduro bike and my size turned out to be the perfect size. Um, and so he saw my bike, loved it. And so we traded, he gave me some cash on top of that because the evil is definitely an upgrade. But funny enough, this is a 2017 Trek remedy eight. 
I actually owned this bike in a size that was too big for me. I bought a used one that was a 19.5. Trek sizing's a little odd. Um, anyway, so this is an 18.5, and I bought this, and everybody's probably wondering, uh, which Christopher just wrote, but it's hidden. Um, why? Why did I sell the Evo, and why did I pick up this Trek? Because Treks are the best bikes in the... No, I'm just kidding. That's a lie. Uh, because... Uh, I love the Evil, but I was looking for a shorter Travel 29er, um, and I've got some things working out for my next new bike, which is less traveled than the Reckoning 29er awesome enduro bike, but it's not going to be available to me. might be available to everybody else, but that thing's not going to work out for another month or two. So until then, um, the Remedy is just really a stand-in bike. This bike's only been ridden like three times, so it's basically new. Um, I already did a bunch of stuff to set it up for me and I have a couple more things I need to do, but this is going to be my bike in the intro. So don't hate me for selling the evil. I know all my subscribers are going to go away because you just like me because of my bike, but it, so is life. So anyway, guys on here, Eric, James, Joseph, have you guys ridden a Trek Remedy? Have you, are you guys familiar with Trek at all? I actually no. test rode. Oh, go ahead, James. No, you're good. Go for it, man. Uh, I test rode a Fuel X... Eight, I think. Yeah. Uh, last year, when I was uh, looking at, I was looking at it was between that and my high tower, and I just, I liked it. It was a capable bike. I just liked the way that my the high tower rode. Yeah. Anyone else? I, I was kind of in the same boat. So I mean, I did the same thing um, as Eric did, and I I rode the uh, the fuel, and uh, it, it's it's I mean it's it is track. They're a big you know, box store, but really, I mean, that, that's a particular bike that in the remedy that are just really dialed in and, and ride really well. Yeah. I actually had a 2014, uh, fuel EX 829er, which was like a short, it's like a 120 millimeter travel bike. And I took that thing. If you guys have seen my videos on Uline and all the jump trails at Galbraith and I did every jump on it and it is a miracle. I did not die. Those bikes are built super well, but I'm not a light person and I'm not really easy on my equipment. But uh, I love that bike, minus it was kind of cross country. So, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Bill says he demoed a 27.5 Remedy a couple years ago and it was awesome. Yeah, they're great. They redesigned them in 2017. Um, and I may or may not have seen a 2019 one on the trails the other day. And it was, I can't say, it was cool. That's all I'll say. Hey, they didn't actually change much. It's kind of a Trek thing. Have you guys noticed that? The three-year rotation for most bike companies? For a full redesign? Yeah. Every, I've noticed most companies, like Giant's a big one who does it, Trek and Specialized sometimes. Specialized is now changing it, but it used to be come out with a redesign, run it for three years and change the specs on it, and then do another redesign. That makes sense from a R and D cost perspective. I mean, there's only so much you can do, and then, you know, gives the engine engineers time to experiment you know give the give the new frames to the pro riders get some input uh figure out where the you know the market's going um plus you know it's it's fun to geek out our bikes so yeah it, it makes sense it, it also makes sense for them from like yeah re that's r d like cost efficiency like they're not gonna send over a completely new thing that needs to get built at whatever factory it needs to get built at, whether it's alloy welds or carbon, like for them to just completely break the mold every year would also really hurt their sales. I bet. Oh, you know, that brings up a good point. Um, you know, the, where they manufacture them, whether it be in house or overseas, those places have to get retooled for the new frames, you know, because the cost efficiency is they can just, stamp those things out as fast as possible from a, a master mold. It, I know it's more complex than that, but I'm just saying for simplicity's sake, retooling an entire warehouse is not cheap. Yeah, but no, what's interesting is it's, I heard something, I'm trying to remember right, but Specialized basically talked about how that's what they're going to start doing in the future um, is every year. Now with their Enduros from, I think 2017 to th 2018, they like change like a couple of things in the rear suspension for like, a change in link, but they talked about like the future is every year new retooling, especially with CNC wow. machines. I'm probably botching all of my phrases, right? But they can test things quicker. And you're close it, enough. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, Joseph, for uh, uh, not making me sound too dumb. 
Um, I think that's insanity on their part. I mean, if they can make it, you know, affordably happen, that's awesome. I love seeing new product. I just can't keep up with all the new bikes. It just makes me want to buy new bikes. Yeah. So they, they've definitely got their stuff going for them there. Man, the grass is always greener with bikes. Um, like I had, I had my reckoning and every time I rode it, I just felt like this is so much travel. This is too much for me. And so uh, I actually went on a ride with Dusty Betty and her husband, Steve on Monday. I was telling them I'm all on the train of like less less travels more. You don't need long travel bikes, and I guarantee you, after I get my newer shorter travel 29er, give me like three months, I'll be like, these are garbage. You need long travel bikes. The 2020 bikes are way better. Whatever, maybe. 12 speed is so outdated. I'm already on 13. <laughs> <laughs> Ceramic drive, guys. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Um, hey guys, make sure if you're in the live stream, click that like button. If you're joining in late, um, I've got three other awesome YouTubers. Um, Eric with No Front Brakes. We got James, JF Rise, and Joseph with Trail Features. Joseph's going to be coming up to the Pacific Northwest here in another week, which is pretty cool. JF Rise, I just got a ride with in Downeyville. And Eric is on my bucket list of dudes to ride with, either in Austin or maybe we'll meet up somewhere. So these guys are just hanging out with me as I'm working on my bike, which is pseudo new. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's see who else was in here. I didn't. I'm trying to see if there's any other names I recognize. Oh, Mike, good to see you, Mike. And he, say, he says his son, B-Man, is watching. Mike is a good friend of mine who just – Mike broke – basically, there's a bone that holds your shoulder into place. He broke the tip of the bottom of it. Broke off. Had to have surgery to put it back together. And he just got the okay yesterday to go back to full riding. So he's stoked right now. Wow. Yeah. Congrats on getting the okay, man, but that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it stinks terribly. But hey, he's back, right? It's, yeah. it's a labor of love riding bikes, yeah, but yeah. try not to break anything. Yes. Anytime something pops out of place, it's not a good it's not mm. a good time. Mm -mm. Just teaching you about the human body. That's what's important. <laughs> I learned how my hip bones connected. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm adjusting the geometry on this right now. It has a little flip chip, but it's confusing me because it's reverse threaded on both sides and kind of difficult to do. Ooh. Which, Make sure you use the torque wrench. Yes, exactly. All right, so yeah, I got yeah, you guys torque wrench. Oh, yeah, I got my torque wrench. I got it. I'll pull it out in a second. But, uh, oh, what's up, John? Good to see you, man. Uh, John, uh, James, I don't know if you remember. He was on Evil. He was on our Down Evil trip. Great guy. Um, guys, question for you. If you could have, if you had, let's say, twelve thousand dollars or less, you could buy one stock complete bike right now. Only the bikes that are on the market. What would you buy? We're gonna start with Joseph because he probably already knows. I don't. Uh, okay, Josh and I have a running joke where I think the oh. Ibis Ripmo is the Joseph, best. Every time you talk about the Ripmo, I'm like, you haven't even <laughs> tested. Exactly. It is the best bike I've never ridden. <laughs> I make sure to specify I've not ridden it. So don't take my uh, a personal opinion on it. But if I were to design a bike on a on a scrap of paper, that would be the geometry I want because it solves all my complaints about um, my my Yeti. So I would say basically a fully decked out Ritmo right now. So Joseph, real quick, I'm not gonna let you off the hook with that. What are your complaints about your Yeti SB5 Plus. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. This is definitely first world problems, right? Oh, I don't like my Yeti. <laughs> um, so what I don't like about my Yeti. First off, I'm a different rider than when I got it. When I got my Yeti, I had just upgraded from a 27 plus hardtail. Now, to give you guys some frame of reference on why I kept going to plus size tires, I got back into mountain biking after I hurt my back. So the idea of having extra cush to keep the vibrations and big hits off my lower spine was a very big selling point. Um, so right now I'm starting to get a little bit more aggressive. My back is healed. I'm becoming more capable rider. Being able to get that bike in the air is starting to become a bigger and bigger priority. Also, I ride an XL Yeti. And that's a big bike. That's a lot of bike. That's a very long bike. Um, so it's it's hard to navigate in the twisty sections. And also Yeti has a very weird geometry where they're taller than they are long. So I'm 6'2", but I only have a 32-inch inseam, so I'm all torso. So oh, wow. I needed extra reach uh, to be able to fit the bike. That meant going to an XL. So I have a 100-millimeter dropper on my Yeti. 
So that kind of gives you an idea of just how not good that bike really fits me in the sense of, you know, how aggressive riders like to ride. When I drop that saddle, it's maybe halfway down of where I would actually like it. It's honestly why I keep grabbing my Chromag hardtail. It's because I can drop that seat all the way down and I can move around in that cockpit and I don't feel like uh, I'm going to get bucked off the bike if I go off a big drop the wrong way. Yeah. So the Ripmo has a little bit of a shorter chain stay, which is kind of where I'm starting to gravitate, uh, gravitate towards now. Um, it's long, but not too long. And it's got massive reach with a tiny seat tube. So I can put a really big dropper on there. So I know there's other bikes. And when I'm up in Bellingham, I plan on getting myself on one of the new, uh, Kona processes, the one five, three, because that's another one that is on the short list. Nice. Here's that, was was very, that was a very long justification of the Ripmo. Well, I have so many things to say, but what I really want to say right now is I just ripped off part of the rocker of my brand new bike. No! Because, because I pulled out my torque wrench and put it to 17 Newton meters like you're supposed to and went to torque it and it ripped it off. Oh, no. And, <laughs> and I literally, as I was doing that, I'm thinking, this is so strong, but it says 17 Newton meters. So now this is part of the rocker now. So I have to get like a whole new rocker link from Trek. Oh, no. Luckily, I'm the original owner, so that's easy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> are those are the, are the sets of those pretty cheap? I don't have enough LaCroix, guys. I just got to quit this. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, Sorry gosh. Gosh, dude. <laughs> Luckily, it's just <laughs> – God, goodness – Trying to be responsible and <laughs> use a, a Newton whatever or torque wrench. I'm I'm torqued. Anyway, it's, <laughs> it's just this. It's not carbon fiber. It's just aluminum. But okay, so hang on. How was that actually attached? Was it threaded in and you stripped it out, or was there some sort of like was it press fitted? How did it go in there? I've got nothing better to do than to take this off to get ready to bring it to the Trek store. So I'll take it off right now while talking to you. Uh, okay. I am not stoked. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just going to leave this on here, actually. Um, long story short, Joseph, can you put a 125 dropper on your 5 plus? <sighs> the short answer is no. Really? Not, not, not efficiently. Um, because first off, you know, the collar height, hang on. I happen to have a dropper post right here. Gimme, there we go. All right, so this is a Bachelor 150 that's gonna be going onto my uh, Chromag. And- um, That's a brand new one too. Yep, this is brand new. Um, so you have the collar here and that, half of that can make the difference between a 125 fitting on my Yeti or me getting punched in the tape every time I sit down. Oh, gotcha. So, you know, saddle placement is so important, especially on longer rides. Um, I can, I just don't know if I want to yeah. like I've, I honestly, I've seen how worldwide cyclery um, has done that video where he actually cut his seat tube down and I have been super tempted to find, I actually do know a guy, not know him personally, but there's a shop that I would trust with that type of work to have the seat tube actually cut down and then rebuilt. So that way I could actually fit a 150 on there. Really? Yeah. yeah. And I'm like that. I don't know what should be cheaper, you know, selling the bike and buying a new Ripmo um, or having a bunch of custom carbon work done <laughs> on the bike and saying goodbye warranty. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think, yeah, I think the better thing to do you know, is to swap it out. I'm surprised you're six, two with a 32 inch inseam. That's, that's nuts. All right. So real quick, MLC adventures, Dre, good to see you. Dre was another guy who was at biker fest down in Downeyville. Mike says he sees an AT-18 Joseph's background, which is of course star Wars, which is the best. Yep. Uh, so Joseph, you and I are polar opposites. I'm 5'9", and I have a ginormous inseam. 
So on all my bikes, I run a 170 dropper. Um, on my Reckoning, um, I contacted Aaron over PNW Components. I said, I need a 170. He goes, um, we have evils and they don't fit. I'm like, no, dude, I measured it. I guarantee you I'll have like an extra inch of room. Sure enough, he sent it to me. I sent him a picture. He's like, okay, that's crazy. I have like a 33 inch inseam for my five nine this. So we have the exact opposite problem. That is hilarious. Um, that's kind of like my girlfriend. She, she has the same exact inseam as I do, but she has a much shorter torso. Yeah. So technically she can fit, she can fit a large frame, but she, because of her torso, the reach is just ridiculous. And she's like super stretched out. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, Okay, so back to the topic. Um, so it turns out it's just a bolt. So this is the clean bolt. I was super worried it was part of the rocker, but it's it's not typical where you thread this in. I'm trying to trying to demonstrate. You don't thread this in this way like a socket. It comes out, and basically the chip is the uh, bolt. I guess is what you would call it. So this is the bolt that you thread into, but it's kind of reversed. So this goes through the frame, and then this screws into it. So luckily that's. Super easy and cheap to replace. <laughs> Scared me there, guys. <laughs> Ooh. That, that, so that, that same thing when I got my intense actually happened to me using their torque wrench, uh, trying to put on the stem. Um, so when I actually did that video, I cut that part out. <laughs> but I'm wrenching on it, you know, to the set torque spec. And sure enough, I busted the uh, stem bolts right off. I mean, well, at least one of them. But okay. I almost wonder if it's like a bolt, just a cheap bolt problem. Yeah, I mean, it's they're bolts and they're hollow, right? They're not like solid, so that's probably an issue. Um, James, how long did it take to get a replacement? <laughs> I, luckily, I mean, it was a stem bolt, so I had, you know, I had others. Oh, it was now, a stem bolt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quit, it's not the rocker bolt. Sorry. Quit laughing at me. It's her. Hey, Becker, it's Trevor. Good to see you, man. Always good to see you on a live stream. All right, uh, we will go to Jaime, aka James, next. Dream bike, ten thousand dollars. What would I get you? James, you still there? I'm there. Are you talking to me? I'm sorry. Yes, I was talking to you, James. What bike would I get you? Sorry, cut out. What'd you say? It was a help me. Green bike. What type of bike would you buy? Oh, if, if I were had. to do this. I'm sorry. Yes. Joseph, thank you for the voice, too. <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah. It cut out. Um, I, So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a... Outside of the uh, intense that I have, I've always been kind of partial to specialized so specialized has a uh, a new specialized epic uh evo which is kind of more of a trail bike as opposed to just straight xc i would i would love to get on one of those i mean i come from kind of that xc background so to have a little more of a playful bike um that i could do xc stuff with i, I would love to have that in the stable james i like you so much but you set me up to make fun of you so hard because i know you the marketing garbage that an Epic is a trail bike. It's a cross country bike. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. I mean, my last one was like 90 millimeters of travel, totally firm. I mean, there was no give to that suspension. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, listen, they, they kind of sold me with their marketing magic that it was going to be trail. Okay. It, so Josh, it, it looks super sick, but it's a cross country bike. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to give it a shot. I'm curious to test it out. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, Stump Jumper uh, is their their other magic do it all for the season, and, and everybody's really embracing that one. I, I still haven't thrown a leg over one, so curious yeah. about that too. Did they just announce that today, or was that just the app? Um, I mean, it's it's been kind of common knowledge for a little bit. I think with inner in, uh, Eurobike, that kind of became a little more popular news about the Evo. But um, yeah, I mean. The, that's kind of the direction it's all been going. Intense has their Sniper uh, XC and their uh, tra uh, Sniper Trail, uh, which is basically just, you know, a little more of suspension on their trail bike, a um, little shorter uh, stem on it, a uh, little slacker geometry. And I think that's just kind of, you know, where everybody's going this season. We'll see what happens. I think it's, you know, it's kind of gimmicky. It's still, yeah, totally XC. Yeah, no, it totally is. All right, Eric, last one. Dream bike, 10 grand, 12 grand. Complete build from the factory. What am I getting you? It is between two bikes for me. No, you got to pick one. You're uh, buying it today. Uh, okay. So my N plus one bike is going to be a long travel 29er because I don't, I have commitment issues with buying a downhill bike. 
that I'll only ride once or twice a year, but I do race enduro, so I want a long travel 29er. So what? And, what's that? I said, so what? One. YT Capra. Ooh. Would you go the full pimped out, like top end one? Yes. So it's not available yet, but it, my other bike that I was going to pick was that commensal meta 29er but it doesn't come out until september so yeah i don't know if it was joseph who put but somebody put the picture of c3po and it looks just like him i know with yeah. the red arm and the red fork yes oh. eric it might have been you because you know Star Wars. it was me yeah, yeah. It, was, it was eric <laughs> eric like, yeah it was me yeah <laughs> oh i wanted to show joseph something joseph look what came today Ooh, is that for the dirt jumper? It is. It's for oh, your dirt jumper. And sick, some grips, dude. which I will promptly cut one of to put my prosthetic attachment on. Nice. <laughs> but look at the rise on these. Now, awesome. Eric, are you sending all your spare? Well, I guess those grips are universal left and right. But are you sending your uh, right-handed gloves to the guy at Hutch's? Yeah. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, I have his address, and I need to put it. I have... I, for a while before I got my prosthetic, I was trying to get them tailored to see if I could figure something out. Uh, I was wearing like a, a, a sweatband, a basketball sweatband before then. Yeah. Uh, like just like a wristband. Um, and so I boogered up a couple gloves trying to figure out how to get them to work right. But every right hand glove that I still have, I'm going to go, I'm going to send to him. Awesome. Cool. Hey guys, Ryan from the Lone Ranger is here. Say hi to Ryan. Not not live with us, but in the live stream. Oh, there he is. Hey, yeah. Ryan. Yeah. I am uh, – so now this bike – I'm on to another bike. I didn't even tell, talk about it. This is a bike that I'm demoing for a couple weeks. This is the Van Dessel Narzan is what it's called. Um, Do you have the dropper post up because you're working on it, or is that how you ride, bro? No, that that is how I ride. No, I'm just kidding. I am taking <laughs> it off. Um, so funny enough that we're talking, Hey Ryan, uh, that we're talking about dropper posts. This has a 125 millimeter dropper post. Uh, it has 29 inch wheels. I went and took it for, I've taken it on like three rides and every time I got anything steep, I felt like I was going to go over the bars and I'm like, this head tube angle must be like 70 degrees or like 90 degrees basically. Um, and so I looked, looked it up. It's the same as my diamondback sinker. And the only difference is I have a 170 millimeter dropper on my sinker and a 125 on this. So every time it got steep, I felt my butt getting pushed forward. And so it felt super sketchy. And so I am i wasn't going to change the bike from how they sent it, but I emailed the guy. He's like, yeah, I'll put the 170 on here. We don't have that steep of stuff in New Jersey, so you should probably not kill yourself. Yeah. So that's how long my legs are. Now you know what it feels like to ride my Yeti. <laughs> yes. Which are you? Gonna, oh, you're gonna rent a demo. Hey, Joseph, if you're serious about trying a Ritmo, I know you probably won't ride one because then you can always think it's the best bike. I will totally get you on one, man, as a demo. You know, I was thinking about that today because I was like, oh, Fanatic has. Oh. Yes, they do. Oh. <laughs> oh and, my. And we all know Fanatic's favorite YouTuber is Fanatic Bike Company. They have their own YouTube channel. Yeah, they, they kind of do. Yeah. So are they are they both aluminum, Josh? Uh, yes, the drop of this uh, this bike. Yeah, and your this is an aluminum bike. Sorry, as I'm just trying about to take the dropper out. Sorry, one second. Oh, that was sketchy. Um, yes, this is so Van Dessel's thing is this is an aluminum bike, um, but it's very unique where they have a bunch of different brands. Um, and sorry, Dre's asking, yes, the Trek is my new bike temporarily for the next couple months until my new, new bike, which I can't unfortunately get for another month or two, um, comes in, but yes, it is aluminum. Um, these guys are unique in that they have a list of parts that you can choose from. Um, they don't have every company in the world, but you can kind of custom fabricate your bike to how you want it. So you can pick an Eagle GX drivetrain with XT brakes or you can get guide brakes, or you can get a diamond fork like what I have on here. So um, you can kind of build it up and customize it to the price that you want to spend. And you kind of get a custom bike and it is aluminum and they don't have a carbon one. I don't know if they will. They actually specialize in, um, uh, James, you can make fun of me now. They specialize in gravel bikes is what they're known for. 
that's that's right up my alley, Josh. No. <laughs> what making fun of me or gravel bikes? <laughs> no, either or. No, I mean, I think uh, Van Dessel's been around for a bit. Uh, I like their, I mean, I've actually ridden some of their gravel stuff. I've actually ridden one of their hardtails a while ago. But, yeah, I was just curious, kind of between your Diamondback and that, you said they're kind of identical in geometry and, uh, uh, like, they're both aluminum. Yeah, the Van Dessel takes the cake, though, in as far as you can run 29-inch wheels or 27.5 plus, which is pretty nice to be able to swap it out. Yeah, so James, I'm not surprised you knew what Van Dessel was. I I never heard of the company when they reached out to me. Uh, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about them. I mean, I know that they've been around. They do a lot of uh, cyclocross bikes, so that's I didn't quite ride their gravel. It was probably pre gravel coolness, but it was like one of their cyclocross bikes, probably back in like 2008. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I loved it. They're they're quality made bikes for sure. No, they're legit. Yeah, and they're. They're a local. I mean, they're local to New Jersey, which is cool. Eric Joseph, you ever heard of Van Dessel? I haven't. Yeah. Nope. First time hearing about it. Turns out, if you don't ride gravel, you don't know. All right, let's go to the chat and see what people are saying. Guys, seeing anybody uh, chiming in or somebody? Dawson, is that a Remedy? Yes, it's a 2017 Trek Remedy 8. Traded it with some cash for my evil reckoning. Um... Let's see. Who else is in here? Where's your Evo? Hi, Evo. I don't have... Oh, Evo. It's sold. It's gone. Uh, Mark's in here. Someone says you said booger. I don't know who said booger, dude. This is PG, though. <laughs> oh, so Maximus asked about the knock block. Are you guys familiar with Trek's knock block? Stuff? Yes. Yes. And I, I know that people are very hot and cold on it. Yeah. Very cold. It stinks. <laughs> Um, I had this bike, and the knock block technology, basically technology, makes it so – I should pull it out here in a second. Their down tube goes straight down. It doesn't have a, a curve in it like most down tubes do. Um, so this Narzan, for instance, the down tube curves right here, and that makes it so the fork can go underneath. Trek made it a straight down tube, basically saying it's stronger. And then they have a proprietary, a.k.a. I call it a selfish – stem and uh, spacers that make it so once it gets to a certain point, your fork doesn't hit your down tube, um, but the stem and spacers stop it from knocking, calling it uh, a knock block, which is garbage. So that's my that's my review on it. How are you going to do X-ups? That's what I want to know. Oh, yeah. Maybe it'll make me whip better because as I try to turn the bars, it'll pull the bike. That's a lie. That's not going to happen. You can really <laughs> tap on those downturns. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine? I mean, like in a crash when there's enough torque, it's just something's got to give. Something's yeah. going to give. Well, I actually know guys who have this bike and the slashes and other bikes that have the knock block and they've gotten in crashes and they say it protects their bike a lot of ways because the pressure goes to your spacers and your stem, not on your fork, which obviously you're right. Something <laughs> will give, but the truth be told, if there was a pro or somebody who has a horror story, they probably haven't shared it with us, but I'd be very curious to see how it went. But if the bike doesn't give, then wouldn't it throw you farther? That's that's part of the fun, Eric. That's why you don't fall. <laughs> I, asked, I asked somebody, oh, I uh, people always ask me what knee pads I wear, and I tell them I wear knee pads even though I don't fall on my knees because people smarter than me fall on them. And every time I'm on the trails, people are like, well, what happens if I fall? I'm like, easy, just don't fall. You don't have to worry about it. So that's what I would say, Eric. Now that I said that, though, I'm going to go out and ride it first thing and just do it, take a terrible crash. What knee pads do you wear? Uh, ones that cover my knees. I actually do wear the, uh, uh, the ones Dan from Fanatic recommended. <laughs> now I'm going to grab them. You sponsored, bro? Let's see. Am I sponsored, bro? No, I wish. I had to pay my hard-earned money. These are the... Oh, look. These have scrapes like I've actually crashed before. I pro I pro oh, nope. That's just the material wearing through. These are the IXS something. Um, and <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, which would be fun for my subs. I have huge, like, ginormous thoughts. Like, straight up thunder thighs times two. I have super long legs. Crazy huge thunder thighs and love handles as well because I have my shorts hair. So, but anyway, these are size extra large and these like cut off my circulation, but they're the largest size they make. 
so I don't think I have them here. Let me check in a minute. But uh, uh, seven IDP, IDP seven. What was it? Seven? Is it seven IDP? I think so. Yeah. That's um, yeah. Yeah. They're transition knee pads. I think it is. I just bought a pair. I had. I literally have not had a chance to ride them, but they could be probably potentially. I haven't ridden them, so hold up. But they could be possibly the most comfortable knee pads I may have worn. They're they're in the same classification of the Ritmo. As long as I'm looking at them and not actually using them, they look amazing. <laughs> Joseph, are those the ones that are made, potentially made at the same factory as the Cali Strikes? Yeah. Are they? They might. I don't know. Uh, it seems like many bike manufacturers these days use the same manufacturing processes and processes. Guys, remember, as mountain bike YouTubers, we're not supposed to talk about that. I did not name any specifics. No, I'm just kidding. We're totally allowed to talk about that. Yeah, a lot of companies, and I think these ISSs too, are from the same manufacturer, so they have very similar build qualities. They're just rebranded? Yeah, they're rebranded, or they'll use like a different uh, material, but like the same internal pad, mm -hmm. uh, or different colorways. Same yeah. robots selling them? <laughs> same robots and, and workers in the factory, unfortunately, probably. Sorry guys, I'm trying to get this dropper post off. I'm not doing a very good job. I I think okay, there are now that square taper um you know is no longer a thing, thank God. Um the two things that I hate working on the most on my bike are um bottom Actually, not even bottom brackets, the actual crank arms, because you usually have to have, you know, a hammer to get them off. Uh, and that's after you've used all the proprietary tools to remove the bolts. Yeah. But dropper posts, dropper posts are my number one. I would I would rather bleed everyone's brakes on YouTube than have to install a dropper post. You guys heard it here first. Joseph from Trail Features will bleed your brakes if you install a dropper post. <laughs> I won't do it well. So <laughs> I did not specify a craftsmanship. I just specified process. Dude, I I don't mind bleeding brakes at all on Shimano, but guide brakes, I would take you up on that offer every day. Yeah. Oh yeah, Shimano has like some of the it's it's dead simple to breed uh bleed Shimano brakes. Let's just um, talk about bleeding on this channel. What's I'm that? right with you on the dropper post. Guess what? 150 millimeter dropper post is still not on my bicycle. Because I have the same anxiety. The what do you have on there? Right now, it's a reverb. Uh, it needs to be rebuilt, and I just happened to inherit a 150 millimeter bachelor. So uh, I need to swap it out, but I've been kind of putting it off. Who did you inherit that from? That's a pretty nice gift to inherit. Uh, a friend from down under. Oh, hey, hey, hey. The man with Box Sweet. Mountain. Yeah. Box Mountain, yes. Um, I'll tell you what, Joseph will speak to it too. I've been running the PNW stuff for probably about a month and a half now, and I absolutely love it. Awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm excited not to have my seat punch me on the taint when I go over something. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, luckily, PNW just redesigned their uh, dropper post lever. Joseph, you had the new dropper post. I'm guessing you have it. Makes yes, it, actually. Makes it so much easier to do. I, I was super glad. And um, hang on. That was one of my biggest complaints with the Rainier was it came with a lever, which is great for the price. Um, but, you know, as even even Rock or um, Fox had a better dropper lever, yeah. but you had to buy it separately for $50. So it better be good. So <laughs> does uh, does PNW have a southpaw lever, or are they still that kind of vertical up and down type lever? No, so this is their oh, new lever. That looks awesome. It's well, like the wolf tooth. The one that they had before that, too, was a southpaw lever, and that comes standard with all their droppers. And a lot of people actually don't like the transfer dropper post lever, Joseph. Really? I... I'm running it for the first time, and it's fine, but it's not like as good as a wolf tooth one. I don't. 
Look who's here. Who popped in? Up, dudes? Speaking oh. of dropping in. JC Trails. James, <laughs> James, are you still in California? Yeah. Are you at Robin's house? No, I'm at the hotel. I'm about to grab some dinner. I just wanted to jump in here and say what's up. Everybody, JC Trails is jumping in. Uh, James, tell us a little bit about your channel. Uh, my channel is, I live in New England, so usually I ride in uh, New England. I do a couple bike reviews here and there. I ride with my wife, and I also meet up with you guys, you lovely folks. To, and uh, James missed our question earlier of if I had $12,000, uh, let's say $10,000 for a dream mountain bike, his bike that he owns would not be in the bracket, but he would probably still get a Specialized. <laughs> Look, you have your favorite t-shirt on, Josh. Hey, I have that t-shirt because I got it for free and I use it in my shop as a shop town. I know. I got tons. Of, I have like eight of them from uh, the Specialized tent from uh, NimbaFest. But yeah. Uh, so what are you guys talking about? Just bikes? Bike bikes and bike maintenance? Yeah. They're watching me work on my bike getting frustrated because Fox has like a part on their bottom of their dropper. Oh, I've got friction paste all over my hands. Oh, um, man. Where's those what? Harbor Freight nitrile gloves, Josh? They're right, they're right there. They're not Harbor Freight, James. Those are the Lowe's Premium. Just kidding. Oh, Harbor Freight. <laughs> Harbor Freight. Hey, I ordered a bunch of uh, nitrile gloves for my garage, and they are size small. So whenever I put them on to work on my bike, it's pretty, pretty <laughs> funny. It's like you're re, re reenacting the uh, Chris Farley fat guy in a little coat. But with exactly. Well, just to tell you how small they are, I could put them on my tiny arm and they fit. So. <laughs> Which should totally be in the next episode of uh, the horrible bike mechanic. Yep. Tiny, <laughs> tiny arm gloves. Which, Eric, you, you use your tiny arm to support stuff when you're working on it. So it's not all bad. Sure. I use it to hold beers. and <laughs> You cannot hold a beer with that hand. Dude. Like this. That's what you need. That's all you need. And a straw. Which That's like saying I can hold a drink with my thigh and then pressing it. Look at, look at, I can hold a drink with my thigh. You ready for this? It's going to blow your mind. You have to stand up on the chair. Look, I use my other thigh. It's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> Cheater. Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, oh. You came in at the right time, JC. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what are you guys freaking talking about right now? This is hilarious. I don't know what we're talking about. Who's in charge of this live stream? Oh, wait, it's me. Hey, everybody, all you daily mountain bike rider followers, make sure you like this. We don't have very many people watching because people are not interested. So it's just us hanging out, really watching me do bike work. Joseph, you're still here. I thought you had to go soon. Yeah, I do, actually. JC, you going to tag in for me? Yeah, yeah. I'll only be here for like five more minutes. I got to go eat dinner. So, okay. uh, Yeah, because uh, there is still a lot to be done around here. And uh, if I need to be prepared to go out to Bellingham, uh, some, some stuff needs to happen off camera. So... It was great hanging out with you guys. It was great hanging out with the chat. I'm just reading over here because that's where the chat is. Everyone, have a good time. Thanks, Joseph. Hey, Joseph. Later, Joe. Um, so, JC Trails, I can't call you James anymore because JF Rides is in here. Um, tell me more about how you've liked your new stump jumper, man. Uh, where to start? It's great. Um, do you need an S Works stump jumper? Absolutely not. I think if you go with this to base aluminum one, you're going to have a good time. Yeah. But it's. The shock linkage is good because you're in the market now because you want to sell your long travel, correct? I already you're sold here. it, and you I have it? a standing bike right back over here. Okay. And uh, you want to just go to hardtail or you want a mid-travel 29er like I do now? I want a mid-travel 29er. What's the travel that – do you have the longer travel of the 29er? Yeah, so it's just the regular stump jumper. It's 140 in the back and 154. Ooh, so, that's – I would love to try one out. I don't – I think we have one specialized dealer in Bellingham. Specialized okay. kind of gets kind of gets poo pooed on here in Bellingham. I I understand because it's such a big manufacturer, but you know they did a really good job with this stump jumper. I give them I give them kudos, you know, because they're always behind the curve, specialized with how they progress their bikes with the geometry and and their linkage, and they won't go away from the horse link. And but it, this whole package is a really good trail bike. You can still bring it to the bike park. You can still bring it to Whistler, and you know whatever you want to do with it, you can do it. Yeah, you know, and I think I watched your video where you were taking it in a bike park, so that's great to see. Yeah, yeah, and it handled it perfectly. I crashed right in the tree, but that was right air. But <laughs> I have never crashed in a tree on a bike park. Okay, <laughs> maybe a couple times. Just a couple, a couple rocks. But so, uh, yeah. uh, here's a question for all you guys. I think I know the answer for JF rides. Do you guys do in kind of Eric too? Do you guys do all your own bike maintenance, or do you get a shop to do? <laughs> 
Okay, start with you, JF. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, some other people have the uh, the horrible bike mechanic type, uh, you know, episodes they throw out on YouTube. Well, I am the worst, the world's worst bike mechanic. So now I all my stuff just goes right to the bike mechanic. I, I could I could mess up uh, putting pedals on, which I have. <laughs> That's in fact, impressive. I think Josh, you helped me at Donnyville put my pedals on my bike. That's no, I helped you take the pedals off because <laughs> and they were. And to be fair, at the end, you're like, those are pretty tight, weren't they? I'm like, yeah, I can't make fun of you. Those were bad. <laughs> I suck at bike mechanicing. I'll leave it to somebody else. There's pros out there for that. What about you, JC? I do. I can rebuild a fork, a shock. I can't press bearings. For some reason, I tried it once, even with a press, and I messed up the bearings. So I'll do everything else but the bearings. And I can't really do shifter cables. I can get it almost dialed in, but I can't get it perfect. You know when you want that perfect shift just to drop in the gear and not think about it? Mine always goes, and I'll do the barrel adjuster, and I can never get it right. So those things I leave to the shop. Those That's my life. Yeah. But wait, you're saying you can like lowers and uppers of a fork? Yeah. It's not that hard. You're beyond me then, man. I don't touch suspension. I do everything else, though. Like, the rear shock is really – an air shock is so easy. It's super easy. You can just go on a YouTube video, and you literally just do step-by-step step and pull it apart. I do use shock, but the fork I stay away from. Well, the fork's the same thing, just a couple more parts and seals. That's all. Yeah. You know, right, but it's about, just, it takes time. What about you, awesome mechanic? Terrible technician. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm rides. Mechanic. I, I'm totally with JF rides. Like I'll try one thing every now and then, but I mean, dude, I that rotor video. I try. I bought three separate rotors trying to replace the friggin' rotor, and none of them <laughs> are compatible with the guide R. So that yeah, was- I I try I try to do stuff just because it ends up being humorous. But in the end, I always call my dude Drew to come over and. Help me out. Everybody's got the mechanic that they have a price of beer or whatever it may be that they have to help. <laughs> All right, guys. But I'm going to get out to uh, – I just wanted to say what's up, and I'm going to go get some dinner with my peeps. Awesome. And I'll, I'll talk to you all later. Have a good live stream. So what are you doing, Josh, real quick? You're just building the bike? What bike is that? Uh, so this is a uh, – it's actually a Van Dessel from New Jersey. It's a yeah. demo bike that I have for a couple of weeks. So I am putting my 170 dropper post on because it came with the 125 and I thought I was going to die on Steve's stuff. <laughs> well, good luck putting it together, man. I'll see you guys later. See you, James. All right. Have a good one. See you guys. Later, man. Later. All right, you other two guys. I'm probably going to only do another five minutes. So you each get a one-minute plug of why the few people watching this or many people watching it after the fact should subscribe to your channel. Um, let's start with JF Rice. <laughs> just do it just like the nike ad just do it hey you can't say much better than that that's pretty good all right what about you eric uh yeah i'm i'm shooting for that uh that mediocre rider field and uh just making do with what i have and trying to push myself to the limits so if that interests you or you want to see me wreck then i've got footage for you so but Eric, in case somebody is watch, uh, just jumping forward to the end, what is unique about you as a rider? What did you say? You just bro- you just broke up on mine. I said, and, and in case somebody jumped forward to the end, what's unique about you as a rider? As why people should subscribe. I've only got five fingers. Well, I guess technically I have ten, but I have five normal size fingers. So yes. And Eric uses a prosthetic, which is it's pretty sophisticated, and he's only uses his front brake. Eric, I've been meaning to ask you, have you looked into mechanisms that when you pull one lever, it does the front and the rear? Yeah. Um, I'm pretty stubborn. So I've looked into the ones where you can dial it so it's like 70-30 rear, 70-30 uh, front. But I think in the end, I like the idea of being able to pull them separately. Like I noticed when I ride downhill, uh, like when I ride at park, I, like, I favor the rear. Like sometimes I'll... To prevent arm pump, I'll just pull the rear brake so that I'm not only – because when you think about it, I'm doing this, right, with my triggers. They're stacked. I didn't know you had stacked triggers. So you have yeah, so front and back. Okay. Yeah, my channel is kind of a misnomer. 
So okay. I'll do this just to save my my wrists and my arms. So I'm only pulling one trigger. So Eric, your channel name is in fact a lie. It is. It's all a lie. It's a facade. And, and Eric, yeah, I want to. I'm unsubscribing. Yeah, <laughs> Eric, I want to welcome you to the liar channel names because people get so upset when they realize I don't post daily and I don't trail ride daily. I just jump on my bike and ride it and pedal it around my house at least mostly daily. But I've seen your calendar animation. It's so good. It I mean, it works so well. I can't change it now. <laughs> I think misnomers are okay because it's the thought, you know? Yeah. yeah ex thank you, Eric. You get me, dude. I appreciate that. I you. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, unless somebody else watching right now has any further questions, I think I'm going to end it off. Um, thanks so much, guys, for joining in. Uh, James and Eric both, I can't wait to ride with you for the first time and again sometime in the near future. If you ever come to Bellingham, you got a place to stay and a place to ride, dudes. Sweet. Thanks, man. Awesome. All right, all you subscribers and you followers and watchers right now, thanks so much for watching. You know what time it is. Don't spend too much time watching a bunch of guys talking about bikes and one of them doing terrible maintenance in his garage. Go and ride your bike. Make sure you do it every day. See you guys later.